Okay. Uh, I wasn't really sure what to do my talk about. I was telling Lee it was somewhat last minute because the week's been a little crazy, but I opened my Bible to thumb through, see if anything jumped out, and the shortest, if not close to the shortest psalm, was the page that I opened to. So Psalm 131, actually wasn't my first choice from this page, but there's 12 psalms on this one page, so I had a selection without going anywhere. Psalm 131. A song of sense of David. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great, too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Oh, I think the, the kind of goal of the psalm, what he's, what he's dealing with himself and sort of saying that he's conquered um, in the psalm is, is a struggle that we have of accepting our place in the world, uh, which is uh, a struggle that everybody has to face. And you could, you could sort of define our lives in several different ways, but in a way, it's sort of the struggle that we have to face because you know, you're, you're, you're born and you know, you're just sort of out here and questions come naturally and you're wondering, you know, where did everything come from? Where did I come from? What's, what's my purpose in being here? Do I even have a purpose in being here? Am I just evolved from a frog? Um, am, I, am I no more value or intelligence or anything than something like that? But, you know, you, God has made himself evident, so you look around, you see the world, and you think, okay, well, there must be a God, and then there's, there's things that you, know, you can't understand. He describes as uh, things that are too great and too marvelous for him. Um, so, so the struggle is knowing, being aware that there are things that you cannot know. So aware of the fact that they're there, but that you will never truly be aware of what they actually are, um, such as eternity stretching backwards. Forward's a little easier, stretching backwards. If anybody's, Dale's shaking his head. If anybody's got an explanation to help anybody wrap your mind around that, I'd, I'd love to hear it, but I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody ever will, but we know the concept exists because God says it does. He has been forever. Um, so we have to put up with that. A dog doesn't have to worry about knowing that and think just, you could sit all day and think, man, I really wish I knew this and you'd never get there. And that's because of the way God made us different. That's a struggle that we have. So that's that's a that's kind of difficult thing he's talking about in the psalm. As I said, sort of the perspective is of having sort of conquered that difficulty. <coughs> so, three verses, verse at a time. Verse 1, O Lord, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. So, saying he's, he's put himself, you know, he's humbled himself. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. Um, a skeptic sort of person might look at this and say, oh, see, God's telling you don't, you know, don't look into anything, just to accept everything without any evidence whatsoever. I don't think that's what it's saying anyway, but um, I do not occupy myself with things too great, too marvelous for me. So two key things in this, occupy myself, not talking about, oh, I don't occupy myself with how to butter a piece of bread because that's too great. Well, you know you can learn that, and ways are growing up, your parents know that you have the capability to learn, so they teach you that kind of stuff. And you know if you spend time learning how wiring a circuit works that you'll be able to do it. Um, but those things aren't too great and marvelous. The definition of the word too, if something is beyond your capability, he doesn't obsess over trying to figure out things that he cannot figure out, and he knows he cannot figure out. Uh, like you, numerous examples if you come up with that, but he just, he doesn't dwell on that all the time. Rather, in verse two, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. I think it's interesting that given what he's talking about in verse 1 about thought, and I, I don't tend to equate active thought with loud raucous as opposed to quietness kind of a thing. You know, I've, I've quieted my soul rather than, than think about things. Um, but he doesn't say he's turned his mind off um, in order to, to not occupy himself with things that are beyond him. Um, but rather quieted it. Um, he's not concerned, um, or the, the concern 
that you can have for things that you can't understand because it's an unsolvable, unresolvable thing that can cause anxiety because you just more and more and more you're thinking about nonstop what you don't know and your own uh, what's the word weakness kind of you know your own lack of capability and yeah we need to acknowledge that so that we see how much greater God is than we are but we don't need to sit around and think oh man I'm pathetic because I can't understand insert whatever it is it's impossible for you to understand that that doesn't do us any good so how has he quieted his soul he's quieted his soul by I don't dwell on these things because that anxiety is never going to solve itself without asking God face to face and him opening my mind to something that I, I can't handle now. So I don't worry about that. And so that that gives me a, a calmness that I wouldn't have if I was worried about it. Um, and then like a weaned child is its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. So little child we're talking here <coughs> accepts what's given to it. You know, we're, we're not like super tiny baby infant kind of completely hopeless but quite small um, accepts what's given to it because it needs that it also accepts that what is given to it is enough and what it needs um, obviously you, you take bad parents and that kind of screws with the example but um, God, it's not a, good, a bad parent um, so we not only do we not worry about the things that we can't handle but we just put our focus on what God tells us what he gives us and uh, that um, you know, contributes to the, the, the calm and quiet of soul that we can have. And then the application in, in verse 3, O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and evermore. He has been talking about himself, a, you know, an individual, because that's a struggle an individual goes through. A society doesn't really, you know, it's a bunch of individuals having a struggle. Um, but then he switches in three to the entire nation. He's the king. It says by David, he's the king. So you know he, he can, kind of his job to, to tell everybody what to do to extend anyway. But he knows that he's not an anomaly in this. Everyone who is a capable thinker is wondering how does all this stuff work. And you sit around and stew on it. And he knows that's going to be to everybody else the same way it is to him. It's not going to do him any good. So we all struggle with the problem, and he's telling them trust God like you're a baby and he's the parent. The children, even with bad parents, trust their parents implicitly. They might get beaten one day and then the parent goes to work, comes back, and they're ready for a hug again because that's that's sort of what the relationship is. Um, he says at the beginning, the two great and marvelous, that's God's, as the British would say, speciality. Um, God is great and marvelous and everything that is beyond us is not beyond God. God did everything. Um, so it's it's uh, within his, his power to control and to influence and uh, to explain to the extent he should. And indeed, there's things that are gr too great and marvelous for us that he has explained you know, gospel kinds of things. That, you know, There was a mystery and then God told us about it that we couldn't have come up with or figured out that he'd set up on our own, but he told us and so we can understand it. Um, Life experience, uh, it's interesting, he says, from this time forth and forevermore. So not have hope in God and then stop having hope in God. Not that he would say that anyway, but experience that we have on earth is never going to, well, I'm 26 today and I don't understand infinity going backwards. So if I think about it real hard, by the time I'm 56, I will. There's nothing in the physical world that can help me understand something that's too great and marvelous for me. It's too great and marvelous for me. Um, so there's, there's not a end to the trust. We have to continue for our entire lives to lean on God um, until our lives end, which for each of us is forever. It just it goes on until the last breath we draw, and if we've trusted on God for all of that, He will take care of us.